Customers want the products to fulfill the functions they expect, while the respective costs are kept as low as possible. If they are made durable enough, hence enabling long-lasting and sustainable use, the design team has, whether intentionally or not, entertained the possibility of reuse. That is what we have seen during the last week's part of this course. But what if something goes wrong during the lifetime of the product? In other words, what happens when a product fails to function as designed? Maybe it occurs during the normal use or after being dropped. In those cases, a user can consider a possible repair of the product. As we've seen in the introduction week, repair is the second loop in the circular economy diagram. The purpose of repair is to extend the service life of a product by replacing or fixing its broken parts. When this is done, it can be said that it was restored to at or even beyond its original design condition. Since repair involves the use of new resources such as materials and energy, it may be less desirable than simply reusing but it still maintains a higher level of the original product's value than remanufacturing or recycling. Repair is, however, a broad and difficult term to define. It can include activities such as simply replacing the batteries in a remote control or as complex as disassembling a product to replace broken parts. Most people, for example, would not attempt to repair their own automobile, but would instead take it to an auto repair shop. Many products can, however, be repaired in practice. It depends on the design, the level of technical expertise and specialized tools which are needed. This varies widely from one product to another. This dependence is, to a large extent, based on the design decisions made early on during the product's development process. Therefore, we will look at two main repair trends this week. Firstly, industrial repair, or rather, repair by companies. As the business model of companies differs, so does the way of designing products. Secondly, we will have a look at the growing sector of domestic repair. For many companies, the repair and maintenance activities are a core part of the revenue streams. This may lead to products which are intentionally difficult for consumers to repair themselves, and this can, in turn, has negative effects on a circular economy. Some companies, however, welcome users to interacting with the products and repairing them as needed. This week you will learn more about the tension between those two ways of thinking and the effect this has on a design for repair.